Good afternoon, everyone. This is uh, Garrett Goggin, CFA, editor of Silver Stock Analyst. Today, we have Keith Newmeyer, CEO of First Majestic Silver, joining us. Uh, so, uh, Keith, how are you doing today? Great, Garrett. Uh, nice, nice seeing you again. It's been a while. Nice seeing you, too. I'm sending a link um, right now to uh, Todd so that he can share this with everyone. And I just wanted to um, talk to you about, you've had some recent news. Um, mm -hmm. Mr. Eric Sprott invested $60 million into uh, First Majestic and the deal just closed today, right? That's right, yeah. Yeah, 78 million Canadian, 60 million US. Okay, what, um, yeah. what, att what attracted uh, Eric to First Majestic? The best silver name there is. He, yeah. <laughs> yeah. he kind of has to own it. Um, now look, Eric and I go back a long time and, um, um, you know, he's, he's traded the name several times and, uh, you know, when he was running the gold fund, uh, when he was at Sprott Asset Management before he, before he retired, First Majestic was their top silver uh, name in, in their portfolio. And, um, uh, so, you know, he's been familiar with me. He knows the company very well and he's been peppering the space. Uh, as you probably know, he's put a lot of money into the silver, uh, space over the last, uh, few quarters and it was obvious that uh, First Majestic was missing and uh, he approached me and um, and we agreed on a price and away we, away, away we went and did it. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, the, he's invested a lot of, uh, you know, smaller stakes and smaller miners, he likes the explorers, but he's made some other big uh, plays into, you know, this top tier of silver miners, uh, 60 mil into, you know, mag silver, right? And then 20 yeah. mil into silver crest metals and then 60 mil into you guys. So he's set up well, you know, if silver continues to, you know, do well in the future. Yeah, you know, it's, it's you know, his view and maybe I shouldn't repeat it Well, he's told me, so I guess I could repeat it, but <laughs> it, 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 you know, I, I, I get called the triple digit silver guy because I made up that phrase, you know, quite some time ago. And uh, um, people kind of laugh at me sometimes because, you know, of my bullish bullishness on the metal, but he's, he's even more bull, bullish than I am. He, his minimum target is ninety dollars, and he's got a maximum target of five hundred dollars. So, wow. you know, wow. if, if he, he, even if he's half right, you know, all these silver stocks obviously will be doing some pretty crazy things. Yeah, no doubt. It, it seems as if we're going into a different era with just the way the silver price is staying elevated here, and you're going to be managing a totally different business, you know, over the next even just this quarter and the, the following years to come. But before we get into the silver price and you know all that stuff, I just wanted to you know, talk to you about uh, your current operations. Um, sure. you know, I've been following you for a while. You had, what, seven operations a few years ago, six or seven operations a few years ago. Um, and then since the Sandy Moss acquisition, you've transitioned to basically three operations, extremely profitable. Um, La Encantada, you've done a really good job at. Um, it's pretty amazing what you've done at La Encantada, actually, because um, I have not seen personally um, companies transform mines like that. Um, you know, and you did that with the roaster. You're implementing technology throughout, uh, you know, the, the HIG um, mills and the micro bubbles, and you're just boosting efficiency across all, off, off, across all your operations, right? Mm -hmm. That's really been a focus of ours. And, um, you know, I get, you know, people probably don't appreciate it, you know, because they are, they're obviously not inside the company and seeing every move we make, but, you know, they, they, this goes back to you know, our first, um, um, hiring of the entire graduating class at the university of Durango back in 2014, we hired, you know, 25 guys and girls, you know, all engineers, electrical engineers and chemical engineers, and, and we let them loose on the business. And, uh, you know, that first hire, some of those people are managers today in our business, you know, it was, uh, you know, six years ago. And we've done that almost every year since. And uh, we've got two joint ventures, one with uh, the I I High Tech or Engineering University in Guanajuato, which is a famous uh, a university in Mexico. And then the one, of course, in Durango State. Um, uh, we, we get fed these young engineers annually. And, uh, you know, these kids have grown up with, you know, iPads and iPhones, you know, they they, you know, they come to the mines and they see all these old farts doing crazy things like, uh, you know, why are you doing that? You know, like there's way better ways of doing things. And uh, it's pretty exciting. And uh, um, it's really this old or, uh, you know, probably this this new generation that is going to replace these older 
you know, individuals. So our main focus these days, or our last, you know, four or five years anyways, is to transfer this knowledge, you know, from the older crowd who are retiring over the next five to 10 years, um, you know, with this new blood. And uh, it, it's uh, this new blood that's really going to change the mining sector. And uh, I'm very proud of First Majestic. I think we're one of the leaders, um, you know, in doing just that. I, 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 you know, I've seen a lot of companies that visit a lot of companies and, you know, I would agree with you. Yours is one of the only mining companies that uses this uh, youthful talent. Most mining companies are, you know, guys that are 40, 50, 60, 70 years old doing the same, yeah. doing things the same way that they always have over the past 50 years. Uh, so yeah. it's great that you're adding technology and it's, um, you know, it, it's low cost and you're showing results from it uh, right now. Mm -hmm. That's right. And we're going to continually push in the envelope. And, uh, you know, you don't have 100%, 100% success rate because there is risk, you know, at some of this stuff. And, uh, uh, but, you know, I, I tend to be a little bit more risk adverse than, you know, other CEOs. And, and uh, you know, I don't mind giving, you know, our, our technical team, our, our, you know, technical services team, our, um, our innovation group, you know, extra capital to do some of this work. You know, we have a, a, a ISO 9000 certified laboratory at uh, the La Priya operation, which is a big lab. Uh, yeah, there's 50 uh, um, uh, metallurgists that work in that lab, um, guys and girls, uh, all pretty young people. And they just pound away on rocks all day long, metallurgy, geology, you know, all the assets, all our properties. And even if we're doing due diligence on potential m &A, you know, this lab does all of our internal technical work. And, uh, you know, we're doing some pretty neat stuff. And, uh, um, you know, all translates, you know, anything that's successful as the HIG was a very successful project that we launched a couple of years ago, we then implemented at the operations. Nice. What, um, is there anything that you want to highlight um, among your current operations? Well, Santa Elena really got the first big spend. You know, we, we put that into our portfolio back in 2015 at uh, where we owned it for the entire year of 2016. And, and that was our first full big year with that operation. And we started, we knew right away that we had to upgrade it. Um, you know, we had 60% recoveries uh, in that operation when we bought it. Um, you know, so that's a lot of 40% of the silver and gold going into waste, which is, you know, just too much. And, and uh, so today we've got 96, 97, 98% recoveries of uh, silver and gold coming out of, out of that operation as a result of all the stuff that we've done there. So it's pretty exciting. Um, um, so, you know, cost of drop, production's gone up. And then uh, with our Metanio coming online, you know, um, if, in the presentation that you're showing right now, and there's a few slides on Irma Tanya, but that was, um, we started developing into that ore body uh, about a year ago and, and uh, we'll by early 2021, we'll be uh, mining, we'll be, uh, next couple, um, we'll be uh, next one, I think, yeah, right here. You see that adit there that we uh, were building in the side of the mountain into that ore body. Nice thing about this material, you see the high grade you know, nature of this material, you know, four or five grams gold and then uh, good silver grades. And they, they, this feed um, will not only add you know, close to 10 years of mine life, but it'll also increase the head grade of this portion of the feed by about 10 times. So the, the, the throughput will still stay the same at about 28, 2900 tons per day. But this 40% of the ore that's currently being fed from the old heaps, because this was an old um, open pit. Um, so 60% of the feed goes from the mine, the Santa Elena mine, and 40% from, from this old heap pad. This Hermitanio is going to replace that 40%. Uh, and so head grades on that 40% of that feed will go up by about 10 times. Uh, so it's going to be pretty nice little bump in production. And of course, um, uh, cost will drop as well. And that's all starting mid-2021. So let's say, Ermitano, what, you, it's going to be about 300 grams a ton that you're going to be feeding in? Yeah, well, the grades are there. So you can see the, um, um, uh, the gold grades, you know, between three to, you know, five, three to four and a half. And, the, you know, the silver equivalent, which is, um, you know, the, uh, you know, that's a gold and silver combined. So, you know, three, three, 400 gram material on equivalency basis. So overall, what do you expect the Santa Elena uh, grade uh, to be uh, once you start? Well, if you, go, yeah, if you go back to the previous slide, uh, you see that, um, oh, next one, next one. You see that the grades here, so uh, don't ignore Q2 because that was a low production oh. month. Don't forget about that. So look at Q1, um, you got 100 gram silver, 
Uh, now, the 40% of that feed is like 30 grams silver, right? So, so that 30 grams is pulling that average down. So mm -hmm. that, that, that'll be replaced by the higher grade or metano. And then you look at that gold grade, you know, the, the mine gold grade is, you know, over three grams, but the, the heap gold grade is like 0.3 or something. Okay. So it's dragging, dragging that average down. So both of those averages will go back up um, with the heaps being displaced. Okay. Um, yeah. And, you know, as your grade goes up, your ounces of production are going to be going up and your cost uh, with ounces being the dom denominator are going to be going down. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's already been a, a good operation for you, and it just looks like it's going to get better. Um, and then, yeah. how, how and, 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 and look at that land package. You know, you you you, um, you, you mentioned you know uh, Silvercrest earlier. Um, uh, Eric, you know, put some money into that company, and Silvercrest is that little white square up there with that red dot inside of it called Los Cheapas. You know, they mm -hmm. Silvercrest has that 900 hectares, and uh, we surround them. We've got all the all these other properties in different. The reason why they're different colors is because we bought them in different transactions, but uh, they're all our our portfolio. So we own all that land. It's like two hundred fifty thousand hectares of land. We got two rigs in the green area right now. We're going to put a, a in Los Hernandez. We've got a rig with a planning on going into El Gachi. Uh, we've got a couple of rigs in the pink area, which is the main Santa Elena zone. We've got four rigs active in the Hermitano blue area. Los Hernandez looks really close to Las Chispas. It looks like the, it almost borders the mine, almost goes into your property. That's right. Yeah, it, it actually does. Um, that's why we have two rigs up there drilling right now. Uh, any old workings around there? Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple of neat outcrops as well. Um, there's an outcrop about two kilometers south of uh, the red dot on our on our property that uh, we've taken some grab samples, which are looking pretty interesting. We haven't drilled that outcrop yet, but that's in the 2021 20, plan. We hope to do that in the next couple of quarters. But uh, yeah, we 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 know their structure uh, where it is, and uh, you know we're just trying to uh, put it all together. Okay, excellent. Um, how's San Dimas going? Yes, yeah, San Dimas. You know, we um, you know I guess the one of the most the, the best thing that happened in San Dimas in the last couple of quarters was the government allowed us to get the Hig mill in there. If you just stop at that one slide, go, go one down, um, uh, down, right. No, next one. Yeah. Right here. See the picture of that Hig mill on the right hand side of that slide. That's actually a picture of the Santa Elena Hig mill, but you see how big that thing is. And this thing came from Europe through the Panama Canal. It was dropped in Mazatlan, Mexico, right during the head in the middle of COVID. Uh, and and uh, we, we were really worried that they weren't gonna let us truck it to, to site uh, because it required, you know, I think three you know, big trucks and they had to close the highway down and all kinds of stuff. But um, uh, they let us do it because of COVID basically because there's no one on the road anyways. So we, so we, got, we got it on site uh, on time and it's sitting there just waiting for, uh, uh, we do have to be, we did a deal with the community where we have to build a camp you know, for the contractors, because, you know, because of COVID, the uh, community is concerned that, you know, outside people are going to be ming uh, mingling around town. So we actually are in the process of building a 300 man camp uh, for construction of the whole expansion program, which uh, started in, uh, in early 2021, but had to, was suspended. So it'll restart here in the in, in Q3. And uh, we hope we're expecting to have uh, the this particular HIG installed by middle of 2021. And then the permitting for Las Chuchas, the hydroelectric dam, that dam there that you see in this photograph is um, supplying 50% of the hydroelectric needs of this operation. We're actually building a second dam uh, further upriver and the town really wants it because the uh, power failures that continually occur um, in this town uh, and uh, uh, it's not very, the, the CFE or the electrical line is very unreliable. So um, um, we got a lot of support from the government and the community to build the second dam. So. We're going to go that's going to go to tender before the end of the year and we should break ground on that new dam so in addition to um, the expansion you see on this slide it's, it's currently running at about 2,000 tons a day over the next two years we plan on getting that up to about 3,000 tons a day with uh, brand new technology and um, and lower cost energy so it's going to turn into a pretty exciting operation and you can see the grades are just uh, wonderful with higher recoveries higher recoveries yeah higher throughput higher recoveries lower energy costs well, wow. yeah. So, you know, it's a great operation for you. It's, um, you know, it's generating a good chunk of free cash flow every single quarter. And it's just, it looks like it's going to get better, huh? 
Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Q2, of course, you kind of have to ignore those numbers because, um, you know, it was a bit of a, but, you know, we will, we'll revert back to the normal cost numbers in the next couple of quarters as the manpower starts to get uh, um, coming back to work. One of the things that um, I like that you did when you bought the property is, you know, restructure the uh, stream with Wheat and Precious, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, when Primera owned it, they they were they were leaving the high grade silver stuff behind because it wasn't profitable for them to mine it because of the stream agreement they had with Wheat and Precious. It was ridiculous, and you yeah. were able to restructure it so it's all. It's in gold, uh, everything's converted to gold ounces. So now you guys are going at those, the higher grade silver areas, right? Right, yeah. The metal doesn't matter to us because we converted at a gold equivalent at $600 an ounce. So um, not only do we get more money for the ounces, but it's only based on 25% of the total production. Uh, so that where we, you know, we got a free ride on 75% of all the production and just have that uh, stream on 25%. And we even make money on the stream itself, which is unusual because most mining companies will lose money on the stream and try to make it up on, you know, the other part, parts of the property that aren't, um, you know, don't have the stream on it. Right, right, right. If you, if you go down to this, uh, back to this coming slide there, that one. You see, there's a you got to go down. See that rail there? So that that was the area that you're referring to. That was the old, the original Terral Tita mine that it's been you know there for over 100 years, and we rehabilitated that uh, uh, rail system. Um, uh, it's still about two kilometers more to go. We we've done about three kilometers so far. It's about five five kilometer tunnel into the side of the mountain, which was basically well it was pardon not basically it was abandoned by the pre, uh, prior operator because of the high grade silver and they weren't getting paid on the silver with the Wheaton stream. So they left it all behind. So we spent a year, uh, all of 2019 and parts of 2020 rehabilitating that. And now we're extracting about 200 tons a day out of this old mine um, uh, feeding the mill. And we'll get that up to probably about 500 tons a day you know, within the next 12 months once we finish the rehabilitation. Wow, yeah, that's unreal. What's the grade down there? Yeah, it's still early days, um, uh, but you're looking three to 500 grams silver equivalent. Okay. That's so good. Nice. Yeah, definitely good. Um, but we, we, we know there's other very high grade blocks in there that are deeper in that we haven't got to yet. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, so, you know, thank you for the update on the operations. Um, it's interesting. There's a couple of things I want to ask you about. Uh, well, I guess, first of all, remember you withheld that silver? Did you, en did you end up uh, selling that silver? uh mm -hmm. withhold it yeah we did order. yeah you know we have bills to pay obviously but um uh, the uh, uh yeah i think that we probably save saved us um you know five six million bucks mm -hmm. i think because yeah, we, we yeah because the long position got up to about 1.3 million ounces because uh, mm -hmm. i suspended sales in march mm -hmm. um uh, the, the lowest sales we did was at 1750 Mm -hmm. And and uh, and then the price just collapsed um, mm -hmm. down to you know below thirteen hundreds. It didn't stay there that long, but it was it was still went down for a couple of weeks. And it wasn't until mid June that the silver price actually got back up to seventeen fifty. And then uh, um, I, I I started selling a little bit when it got up there. And then uh, that position was pretty well sold by by the end of July. Um, you know and. Uh, you know, I don't I don't know what the average is, but um, you know we we saved at least five or six dollars an ounce uh, by making that move. Your experience as a trader came in handy, huh? Yeah, yeah, it did, and uh, I actually went long some silver too. So you know, not only did we hold back some silver, but I actually went into the futures market and bought a million ounces of of, of silver uh, on the on the paper Comex market. So nice. what day did you buy it? Uh, in, it was in March as well. Um, that was on First Majestic's books. Um, uh, yeah. So it was for, for the company I did that for, but we made uh, two and a half million bucks on that trade. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Didn't you do something like this in the past as well, a few years ago? Yeah, occasionally I have, yeah. yeah. When I see these kinds of super extremes, um, yeah. you know, I, I do try to take advantage of it because um, I know it's always quite short term. Um, yeah. I'm, uh, you know, it, it's it, the thing that was the big indication to me. It was that the silver sales on our website just skyrocketed, mm. and and, and uh, you know we were getting phone calls and from the price other, was going straight down. Yeah, the paper yeah. price is going straight down, and and, and the physical uh, uh, metal is just flying out the door. Our orders mm. went up like ten times, wow. and 
we, we got a call, calls from actually Sprott um, uh, Money called us and said, raise your price. You're selling your silver too cheap. So we, we, we ended up raising our, our, our silver price. And uh, I was blown away that we were actually being selling silver at you know, the margins that we were selling it at. And uh, uh, we ended up running out of it and uh, having to wait um, uh, uh, for more metal coming in the door. But pretty exciting time. But that told me right away that there was a complete disconnect between the actual reality and paper. What premium do you try to sell the silver at on your website? Normally, it's like a couple of bucks. Okay. Yeah, it's it's um, uh, sometimes even lower. Like if if uh, you know, going back a couple of years, mm -hmm. um, you know, our volumes over the website were tiny. You know, no one was buying metal. Um, you know, if we if we sold five thousand ounces on our retail website, that was uh, you know a decent month. And if you go back to um, 2010, 2011, you know, we'd be selling hundred thousand ounces a month. Okay. And, yeah, so it's a huge, huge difference. So you know, we're back up to those levels. We we can't get the inventory right now. Like we we would be selling at those levels if we had the inventory. Uh, but our premium right now is uh, I think about four dollars. Uh, and and if we had we had more metal in in inventory, we could probably sell two or three times what we currently. Why can't have. you get the inventory? Because you're mining it. You know, you got it right. Is it at the refinery bottleneck? Yeah, the roof is okay. We had Northwest Territory Mint went bankrupt a couple of years ago, you know, out of Nevada. Then we had um, uh, Republic, Republic go bankrupt just a, a while ago. Um, so those are those are two big refineries. Um, uh, Republic, I think, was the the, the biggest um, in, mm -hmm. in the United States, and, it was, it, and so now we're stuck with um, a couple of small refineries. Uh, we're using Scottsdale now. Um, uh, they're really good. They're, they they make a really nice product, and we're using Sunshine, uh, but they're so backed up with their U.S. Um, uh, silver dollars that they make, or silver you know eagles they make for them. But um, and, and the government takes more priority than we do, of course. So uh, it's tough. It's really tough to get money. I mean, we 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 could send Scottsdale fifty thousand ounces tomorrow, and then yeah. wait six months to get refined product. Wow! Wow! Yeah, I, people are definitely interested in silver price. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but you know what? There's a couple of questions. Sure. Um, people are interested in the Mex the Mexican tax issue. You know, Mexico's after you for what, like 200 million taxes due to the yeah. price, wheat and precious yeah. Yeah. transaction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of as well. It is a very strange situation. You know, they they Primero in the day, you know, they they followed all the rules. Um, uh, when the stream was first created with Wheaton back in 2010, um, it was one of the first streams. Um, uh, you know, there's very strict OECD guidelines that, that uh, cover all this transfer pricing stuff. So, you know, okay, and, and uh, the OECD allows for streaming activities to exist. Um, Mexico is a member of the OECD. I think there's about 138 member nations to that treaty. And, um, um, you know, governments don't necessarily like it. Um, but they're a member of the treaty. They've signed on to it. Um, so companies, oil and gas companies or mining companies who work in, you know, jurisdictions around the world, they follow these very strict guidelines. And, and uh, in the case of Primero, you know, when um, um, it was it was approved by the government of Mexico, they, they allowed it to happen. It was part of the uh, um, it, it was reviewed by the tax authorities back in you know, 2010, 2011, 2012, and that was all fine and good. But you know, I guess when silver prices went to 50 bucks an ounce and they were only getting their taxes on $4, um, I guess they took offense to that and they, they sued Primero, uh, I think it was in 2014. And then in, in 2016, Primero won in court and, and it just basically went sideways for, since then. And then uh, the two year limitation came up, uh, which was in 2018. Um, um, and they've come back to the table and said, hey, look, you know, we, we, we want to reopen this file and we want to collect. Um, um, and they, they base their collection number, the number you threw out, based on their calculation of, of what, you know, they lost uh, in potential taxes if they had been paid in spot versus being paid on what the stream contract is. But, you know, we have a contract, you know, and, and it's it's a legal legally binding agreement. And uh we have, we can't not we can't do anything with it, right? So, so um, it's really become a political um, uh, issue now. Uh, you know, we've got the Canadian government to the highest levels. Uh, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau was aware of it. His 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 finance minister is aware of it. She's dealt with it, 
and been dealing with it. Uh, the ambassadors on both sides um, of Mexico and Canada are dealing with it. So it's being dealt with in the highest levels of both governments. But, um, you know, there's really nothing we can do about it. Uh, we, we're, you know, we're surely not going to be extorted um, because, you know, this is shareholders money. And, uh, you know, if, if, uh, if they want to have a reasonable settlement, then OK, fine. But but uh, $200 million uh, uh, is not a reasonable settlement. That's that's extortion. And, uh, you know, we just simply can't um, abide by those types of. Um, you know. you have a, you've got a tax ass asset on your uh, balance sheet, right, of like 80 mil. Didn't you try to do a swap with them, offer a swap? there's a large um, accumulating of that credit on our balance sheet that's growing and uh, and that would offset any settlement for sure at least we would assume right mm -hmm. um, um, yeah so it's there so you know you know we're okay we, we've got a lot of people working on it we we want to get this off our shoulders we want to get it off our shoulders yesterday but um, mm. you know get, get, get getting the right people to the table is, is uh, not always the easiest thing to do yeah. Um, you know, Wheaton Precious Metals had the big court case in Canada a couple of years ago, right, which they came out right. victorious and they won. And um, yeah. all the companies that have streaming issues, they, they, it seems like streaming gets held up, you know, when, you know, push comes to shove and, um, you know, it all works out. So, you know, hopefully you'll be able to put it behind you. But, uh, you know, I think it's held back your stock price so far this year, right? I think it has. Oh, for sure. You know, we were, we're hearing more about it um uh from from investors and you know the note in the financials is is pretty mm -hmm. obvious you know it, it's a you know big paragraph explaining the issue and um, um you know the number is a big number you know it's 200 million plus dollars it's not a small it's, amount of numbers it, it's, it's big it's, but uh, it's big but it's not that big you know you've got 90 mil on your uh, balance sheet right now you're going to probably put another 30 40 mil you know at the end of the third quarter here um, so oh, yeah, you know, yeah. even if you, no, we, 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 yeah, we could pay it if we, yeah. um, it wouldn't bankrupt us, but, uh, right. it would be, it would still be annoying. And, uh, I think, I think more to the point, it, it, it's not so much the number or, mm. or so much the fact that could we afford it or not? Cause mm. obviously we could, if we had to, but, um, um, I think some institutions, they, it scares them away because, um, you know, they, they're, they're, they're probably their corporate governance committee probably. Just says, hey, look, you know, they got this issue. Don't buy that company until it gets resolved. So uh, that probably to some degree, right? Well, yeah, Wheat and Precious Metals took off, right? When the court case was settled, freaking went through the roof, you know? Um, it'd be nice if you guys. Yeah, I think it was up 20% that day they announced it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Okay, good. So now that, you know, you've got a little cash in the bank, people are looking for dividends. Do you see any dividends mm -hmm. anytime soon? You know, sooner, sooner the better for me. Um, uh, I'd love to see us paying a dividend. Um, we, we, you know, we did talk about, we talk about it almost every year at the board. And, and uh, I think the, the board is um, getting more uh, uh, interested in doing it. I think, you know, it's really the cyclicality of this industry that really kind of, you know, freaks people out because, you know, one, you know, one, well, one day you have $15 silver and you're, you're barely making a penny. And, uh, the next thing you're twenty five dollars silver and you're cash flowing like crazy, and um, you know you you want to when you pay a dividend, you don't want to have to take it back. So that that's one of the biggest concerns we've had right from the beginning. And uh, I think now with you know with the expansions at San Dimas, the uh, expansions at Santa Elena, you know, looking tattle, looking pretty solid, uh, stable. Uh, you know, we're going to have increasing production and increasing profitability over the next couple of years. So you know, if, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen soon. I think. Right. Yeah. It, um, you know, the silver price is held up. We had a good spike and then it's held up here, you know, and every day that goes by, you know, your profits keep increasing and increasing, you know, as you keep on producing silver and selling it at these, you know, levels, um, it's yeah. going to be interesting watching you with these, uh, with this new profitability, you know, because previous years, right. It's been up and down, like you said, and now you're going to have hopefully, you know, a good chunk of change that you're going to be able to use to, invest in um your current operations to you know maybe pay dividends in the future and then you know to grow for you know potential acquisitions and you know one of the guys out there he's wondering are there any mines or explorers that you find interesting out there or projects in the silver space <laughs> well i can't say too much about that because then and it's almost like shoot, shooting ourselves in the foot isn't it but um uh look we we you know we know the space very well um uh we know mexico of course very well and uh uh, you know, we had we had seven mines up and running back in 2017. We now have three mines. Uh, 2020 is our first year 
that we're not producing concentrates since uh, 2006. Um, so it's nice to be just a silver and gold uh, producer. Um, uh, and all that metals in the form of dory bars, which is fantastic. We don't produce concentrates, which is uh, meaning that our, 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 we don't have those um, high uh, smelting costs that other mining companies have to you know, uh, deal with. So that's great. Um, so, you know, our portfolio couldn't be better. Um, um, you know, our, our biggest challenge is really, we know how to grow internally. Uh, we, we, there's exploration that's, um, uh, we've expanded all the exploration. So there's been a lot of work being done there. And we're hopeful that that's going to add ounces. We've seen at Hermitano that discovery. So, you know, we've added, you know, a substantial amount of mine life at Santa Elena as a result of drilling. Uh, we mm -hmm. hope to see those similar types of successes uh, throughout the entire portfolio. And then the San Dimas um, expansion, of course, then the Hermitano coming in. There's lots of exciting, good things happening, but the, the, the biggest thing for us is, you know, what, what does the M&A environment look like? Because mm -hmm. um, you know, it doesn't do us any good you know, to buy a 1 million ounce producer. You know, it's, uh, you know we, we have a portfolio of four mines in our portfolio that are currently not operating, which all could be turned on tomorrow and produce a million ounces each. Yeah, but well, yeah. you know, your Silvercrest acquisition, right? That was at like the yeah. bottom of the market. You paid what, 130 mil or something like that for Silvercrest? 100, 100, 105 million, yeah. Yeah, it's 105 mil. And you're getting yeah. uh, like, it's paid for itself over many times over so far. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and the market environment's a little different now, you know, with all silver yeah. running up and all the juniors running up. And uh, yeah, it's hard to find um, a good deal out there. Let's put it that way. It is, yeah. And then, uh, you know, it, it's, I don't want to go, go buy an exploration project either. You know, we, we have right. to buy something that's either in production or, right. or uh, very close to production, what, something that's got blue sky and expandable. What about um, like a um, share dividend, a dividend of shares in some of your properties that you spun out? Yeah, the um, well, we own a big position in first mining gold, um, um, and we've talked about dividending that out at some point in the future. Um, um, it's still up in the air. We haven't done it. You know that that company is in permitting stages, and uh, um, you know it's it's uh, kind of boring um, uh, watching a company uh, go through permitting. Um, uh, but once they de-risk that, I think that um, the future of first mining looks pretty good. So. Uh, I think at some point there might be, um, you know, dividend paid out. Um, at least historically, we've spoken about doing that. What about Silver Dollar? That uh, recent um, transaction that you guys did? Yeah, we've done a couple of interesting transactions. You know, we did um, one with GR Silver, yeah, uh, where where I think we own. I don't know, Todd will know the exact number, but you know, over ten percent of that company, um, mm -hmm. uh, Silver Dollar, the one you mentioned, gained you know over ten percent of that company. So. Um, you know, it's kind of nice being on, on, on that side of the equation. It's not something yeah. we've done historically, right? It, it's, um, we've been big buyers of assets and so we built a pretty big portfolio. Now we're trying to monetize some of the smaller projects and, and get ready for our big next acquisition. And uh, Todd's doing a great job and it's, and, uh, it's nice to see the, our, our partners performing so well. And, uh, um, you know, there's going to be a couple more deals that people will probably see happen as well. All right, good. Well, thank you for the update. Uh, I think you want to talk about the silver price a little bit. You know, one of the reasons why I brought you on is because you've been, you know, outspoken proponent of the silver price. And, you know, and it's good. You're a CEO of a silver mining company. And yeah, you're bullish. You know, it's good to hear you talk about it. But, you know, um, it, it's an interesting environment, right? Going from March to silver bottom and out, what was it, at $12, $12.50? And it exploded yeah. higher here to, you know, $26, $27. Um, it looks like we're in a different environment, but the, you throw out those ratios all the time, right? Of silver on the ground, silver that's produced. What are those ratios again? Yeah, it's just to be clear, Garrett, um, you know, I, I, I'm not a bull on silver because I'm the CEO of a silver company. Mm. I'm the CEO of a silver company because I'm a bull of silver, mm. right? So yep. I, 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 I came from a copper company and uh, when I'm looking, you know, in 2000, 2002, when I was mm. trying to figure out what to do next, I looked at, you know, all the metals, you know, and I love copper and still love copper today, but silver has got the most um, dynamic supply demand fundamentals of any metal that I know mm. of. And, and, and uh, um, so, you know, I, I chose to put a silver company together for those reasons. Yeah. Um, and uh, I've been, I haven't been right for the entire 18 years, but um, 
I did predict the predict $50 silver. I didn't think it was going to take 10 years to do it, but it, but mm -hmm. it did happen. But I did not predict silver was going to go from 50 back down to 13. That mm -hmm. was a surprise to me. And uh, I, I would have thought we would already be in hundred dollars silver prices by now, you know, but uh, yeah, I still think it's going to happen. And um, you know, one of the things I do look at that you just mentioned is the ratio, you know, we, you know, according to the scientists, you know, there's about 15 or 16 ounces of silver uh, in the earth's crust for every one ounce of gold. That's kind of the accepted, um, you know, number. Uh, but we're not even mining close to that. You know, we're mining eight ounces of silver for every one ounce of gold being mined worldwide. So silver is turning out, uh, or at least looking like it's a lot rarer than even scientists have claimed uh, uh, it to be. And and uh, with silver, it, it's 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 um, such a cheaply traded uh, metal that it doesn't even pay to recycle it. So so a lot of the silver that's been consumed over the last 30 years in the form of televisions and washers and dryers and refrigerators and freezers and uh, automobiles and you know you name it uh, is just been put in waste dumps or the ocean or or, or wherever and, and not recycled and uh, um, you know according to the numbers that I've seen you know 90% of uh, all silver that's mined it, it goes into waste and then never gets um, uh, 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 recycled and the, the, for gold. It's the exact opposite. You know, ninety percent of all gold gets recycled. So, um, you know, and mining at eight to one, eight to one with technologies and with um, you know, all the things that we need to do as a human race to get off oil and gas and and and, and light up the planet in, in in all the green ways we want to do it um, is going to require a ton more silver and copper, of course, as well. But uh, um, you know, and we just don't at, at twenty thirty dollars silver. We don't have the price is not high enough, in my opinion. To supply the needs of the human race over the next uh, several decades. What, what about um, you know above ground silver stock? Is there a lot out there to, in, in your estimate? Yeah, you know there, there's numbers. You know um, um, uh, David Morgan, you know says there's two billion ounces um, mm -hmm. uh, in, in and, and that's commercial silver, like that's one thousand ounce commercial bars. Um, uh, you know, I don't know how right he is, but, you know, that's the number he banties around. Um, uh, you know, if you look at the ETFs, you know, there's about, you know, 900 to a billion ounces in ETFs. So uh, the difference between that number would be, you know, in private hordes, I gather. But, but, but if you look at recycling, um, uh, back in 2011, when silver went to 50 bucks an ounce, that year there was 250 million ounces of silver recycled. And, you uh, this, this uh, latest number for 2019, it was 125 million ounces of silver recycle, which is really, uh, you know, about 10% of the consumption is, 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 is from recycled metal. And most of that comes from hospital film and, uh, and, uh, and, and jewelry, but, um, you know, electronic components uh, don't get recycled. They just get thrown away in, in, into waste. So um, the, in theory, when the next time silver goes to 50 bucks an ounce, there won't be any of that silver around to recycle because all, you know, already all the silverware, all the little old ladies, you know, silver that's been tucked away in cupboards and have all come out you know, in 2010, 2011 during that big run. So, you know, people that I listen to tend to think that uh, you're not gonna see, you know, recycling of silver hit that old high of 250 uh, million ounces until silver prices get back up north of $100 an ounce. Right. Uh, so what's your outlook on silver for, you know, over the next year or so? You know, short term, I hate picking short term numbers. You know, I, you know, I, yeah, I've been so wrong over the last five or six years. I would just never have thought to see what we've seen. Uh, you know, I, I could see easily ending this year at 30 bucks an ounce. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they, they, this, the price is holding up pretty good here. And uh, uh, there's just a lot of reasons why you want to own the metal. Uh, the miners are still not back to normal. Uh, the, so, the, so the supply side is still uh, very, very tight. Demand is, is, is extraordinary uh, from the retail investment. And also, of course, the industrial demand is still all very strong. So everything's pointing to, to higher silver prices in my view. But um, I still believe that we're going to see triple digit silver just based on ratio, you know, this eight okay. to one, uh, okay. you know, $3,000 gold, you know, you got, you know, $200 plus silver, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. There's been some wacky stuff going on so far this year, right. With, um, you know, all the fed stimulus putting in trillions of dollars into the economy. 
Um, you get Tesla going to thousands of dollars and you, you know, rumors come out of Kodak and it goes up 40 X and there's just, there's a surplus of liquidity uh, out there that is yeah. you know, driving markets around and it's going to find its way. Um, it already found its way a little bit in the silver, but it, it's probably going to continue. Yeah. I, look, I look at this as almost an identical market. I'm not sure if you agree or not, but, you know, going back to the dot-com bubble of, you know, March, 2000, when the NASDAQ hit 5,000, you know, it basically went straight up from 1,500 to 5,000 over about an 18 month period, starting in 98, uh, ending in uh, uh, 2000. And then over the next three years, you know, the NASDAQ drops about 80%. And that was the beginning of the gold bull market. And, uh, you know, gold started at 250, it went to 1900 and uh, silver started at five bucks, it went to 50 bucks. And, uh, um, and, and, and the NASDAQ didn't hit its old high of 5,000 until 2015. 15 years later, it took for the NASDAQ to hit its old high, um, which is pretty astounding. So I think we're going to go, I think, uh, you know, the, unfortunately, um, you know, the U.S. markets are getting a little bit bubbly. And, uh, you know, I think the institutions, you'll have to wake up to the fact that they will wake up to the fact that there are other industries that they have to put their money into to make their gains as they did in that big bull run, bull run from 2002 to, you know, 2012, you know, where we had a nice 10 year bull market. So, you know, if we have another 10 year bull market similar to what we experienced during that run and you have gold at the bottom, we call it 1050 uh, up eight times, that's $8,000 gold and, um, you know, silver up uh, 10 times from five to 50, you call it 13 as a bottom, you know, that's $130 silver. So. Yeah. Those aren't bad numbers, and and uh, you know that's kind of what I'm expecting is going to happen. You know, right. Only time will tell, of course. Right. Um, that sounds good to me. That'd be very interesting to hear. Uh, interesting to see over the next few years, uh, and it'd be interesting to watch. You know, the silver miners. You know, to go from a low margin environment to high margins, and actually to see what they're going to do with that increased cash flow, and you know, the benefits mm -hmm. that shareholders are going to get through. You know, dividends and you know the, the higher cash flows, and you know all that. So. Um, yeah. that's, about, that's about it on my end, Keith. Is there anything else you do? Oh, great. No, very thorough, Garrett, as always. And uh, no, I think we covered pretty well, pretty well the whole story. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you for joining me today, Keith. Uh, I think everyone had a good time and enjoyed it. Oh, great. Well, thanks for setting this up. Appreciate it. No problem. We'll talk soon. Okay. Thank you.